Hey guys, here with the next video, uh, here to talk about player desks, acrylic mat, and um, the battle mat all kind of in one, and just showing a bunch of different mock setups and things that I thought you guys would appreciate. Uh, so let's just dive right into it. Um, for starters, these giant blue sheets that you're gonna see, these are the actually the acrylic. Uh, you can see I've kind of peeled away at the corner a little bit just to show you what I'm talking about. It comes with this protective uh, coating on both sides to keep it looking nice until you're ready to peel it all off. And then it's really nice and see-through for you. Uh, it does the job. You're gonna notice that it has these little indents on them. Uh, I have a medium table. And so there's two that are a little bit smaller and one that's a little bit bigger. And that's the one that goes in the middle. Um, one little thing that kind of stinks about having the acrylic on with the player desks is that you cannot lift these up and out. They won't come out when you've got the uh, player desks on both sides. So just keep that in mind for um, practicality purposes that you, you do have to take the player desks off in order to get the acrylic out. For me in this demonstration purpose, it's not a big deal obviously, but if you're, depending on what you're using it for, that is a problem. Um, I do have the battle mat underneath. Um, I'll kind of show it a little bit more here by taking a moment to move this top one out of the way because you can just kind of lift it up and over like such. Um, I'm intentionally leaving mine coated until I use them for the first time just to kind of keep them uh, looking nice. Um, one thing worth noting, um, I had just done the one on the game deck here recently. Uh, if you are trying to look to store the game deck in your table and you also have the acrylic, you cannot put the acrylic and then the game deck on top of it and then the toppers on top of that. It will not store properly because this actually right here will lift up just a little bit too high. So when it comes to storage solutions, you can put the game deck in and put the toppers on, no problem. You can put the acrylic, obviously, in your table, no problem. Uh, but you can't put the acrylic all the way across with the game deck on top. Now, you can do what I just did, though, uh, as kind of a workaround, depending on what you have in the table, where you just take the one, lift it up, slide it over, and then you can put the game deck in and the toppers on top. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense, but it kind of allows for you to um, store things in the table when it's not used if you're not looking to uh, store them elsewhere, kind of like I did. I know I personally built um, some modular rails that uh, just kind of create a little place for everything. Um, another little thing to note, I kept the tube that the uh, battle mat came in, and I have a medium uh, topper, or, or a medium table rather, and so two of the toppers for the large are uh, slotted here for the topper block, but I don't use them. So this makes for a nice little place to store them uh, in my system. So hopefully you can find a place that works for you, but this kind of is something that I designed and built that uh, utilizes a similar um, system, just to kind of show that off. Um, and then let's get to the uh, battle mat and kind of then the, the player desk. So for the battle mat, um, it, it very much is a nice mat. It's a, a nice quality. You can see that I just took some of my magnetic tiles that I've made um, 3D printing. They, they do perfectly line up with that. Um, these are the, um, the ones that uh, come from the, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting the name. I'll, I'll put it in the, the bottom here, uh, uh, Master, nope, uh, name has escaped me. <laughs> Anyways, you can use the, the, the mat here um, with pretty much any standard one inch by one inch here, or if you flip this mat over, it does have the, the hexes on the back. Um, I'm not even gonna worry about flipping that because there's just so much stuff in here otherwise. Uh, one thing to note is that the battle mat uses uh, these markers that come with it. I actually just got mine the other day, which is kind of nice. Um, and then it also comes with their magic juice, as they dub it. Um, the markers themselves are just straight up wet erase markers. Just not to be confused with dry erase markers that look very, very similar. These are good for the acrylic. These are good for the battle mat. You don't want to get those wrong, otherwise it can permanently damage the product. So just make sure that you do your research. If you go on the Kickstarter site, they do even uh, list that under the accessories that one is wet and one is dry erase. Um, and you can buy wet and dry erase markers from 
pretty much anywhere. They're, they're very easily uh, something you can find. As you can see, I already have these lying around. These are a little bit more fun colors, but obviously, depending on your product, depending on where you get them from, they might you know all run into the same issue where some of the colors just naturally don't want to come up off the battle mat. Um, that's where this stuff is supposed to come in handy and help with removing it. So let's move on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about these player desks. So uh, right here, I've got my uh, old MacBook Pro, which is a 15 inch laptop, just to give you kind of scale of how something like that sits on here. Um, a little bit more information, the distance from the top of the leather to the top of the leather here is 14 and a half inches. And from the bottom of the leather to the bottom is 10 and three quarter. And then going from this uh, bottom to top, uh, leather is 11 and a quarter. So just to kind of give you a little bit of a, an idea, because it is a tapered shape. And this is one of the newer ones, the newer designs, which are uh, inlaid in design. So there is a little bit of a lip. So when you do have something like a laptop that doesn't sit in here, it doesn't quite sit flat because these two are on the wood, whereas these two are on the leather. Um, but it, it's not a big deal. It has a little bit of wobble, but honestly, you can kind of play with it or find a solution. Um, I thought I'd kind of showcase the pencil holder in a different purpose. I put a bunch of Dispel dice, um, minus this one who's not, but I wanted to showcase the amount of uh, spot, uh, space and size that these pencil holders actually have. They're quite large and they hold a lot. So um, whether you're using them for dice or whether you're using um, the now discontinued uh, sketch pencil with the eraser, which honestly there's enough room for the uh, refill even in there, there's tons of space, or whether you have um, oversized pens um, like my fountain pen here, or whether you've got a giant highlighter which can still even fit in there surprisingly, um, or whether you're the type of person who has one or even seven pencils, they all fit. I mean, this, these things are massive in the amount of space they hold, and I like that because again, you can use them for multi-purpose, um, including the uh, the dice. And I thought that was kind of a cool little uh, thing that they decided to do. Um, kind of showcasing a few different setups. I'm a believer, I'm a lover of dice towers and I like their P-trays. So um, you'll see that I, I've found a way to kind of slide one on here. I know they were looking into making an accessory for that. And I'm kind of glad they didn't because I don't think it's necessary. I mean, this is stable. That's not moving anywhere. It, it, it is flat on this part in the very back by the rail. So it isn't gonna wobble, it isn't gonna move. Um, and, and that can sit there and the feet on here keep this from sliding. Plenty of room for the dice on the other side, even if you don't wanna use the component holders, which obviously you can, but if you wanna show off your, your beautiful pieces of um, works of art from Wormwood, uh, again, same thing. You can do whatever you want here. Um, but there, there's definitely more than enough space on these guys for uh, an average setup. I know one of the other things that someone had asked me about was whether or not you could just use the rail and how practical that is for writing on in comparison. I mean, you can see kind of in comparison to a normal D&D &D, um, character sheet how, how much space this gives you. Personally speaking, I wouldn't want to write directly on the rail. It just isn't practical. I, I think that I would be finding like clipboards or something like that that I, I could utilize or make or uh, buy, just even your typical ones. You just want to be careful of the metal on the back or the screw holes near the top for the clip to make sure that that's not going to actually make contact with the wood and accidentally scratch. The last thing you want is someone who's coming over to have fun, damaging your table, and then everyone's whole night is ruined. Um, so kind of going into a few other things that these things have, there's the, the rail for cards. Um, being that it's not curved or arced in any way, shape, or form, it is not very practical to play car, uh, games where uh, you use cards sitting next to someone else. Like, I can't imagine playing Wingspan sitting here like this with someone else right here. You're not going to be able to, to hide your cards by doing that. So I think the, the card rail is very limited in purpose. Uh, unless you're sitting across from each other, which would be fine. So um, just something to note. I know that they had the, the uh, what was it officially called, the, the card holder that is arced and can spin. I actually had one initially and I returned it. It's the first and only product um, from the MGT that I returned with the intention of not keeping because of the fact that it was just a very overpriced 
product, in my opinion, for what it actually did, which I found interesting that they even highlighted in one of their Worm Life videos and kind of said, you know, yeah, people don't love these things. And, and I agree. I think that they're really not a great product. I got it for the intention of my daughter, being that she's younger, thinking it might help her hold the cards. And I just found that it flopped around quite a bit. Um, I thought that the cards didn't angle at a very nice angle and it didn't really hold a lot at the same time. I like the length of this, I like the size of this, but it doesn't really give privacy. So that is one downside of this card reel. I'm sure there are other games, other practical purposes where you could use this. Um, another thing I wanted to showcase was how this magnetic rail on this side is um, something you can capitalize on, but you can't use it for wine because wine literally just sits on the table. So just keep that in mind that um, some drinks are able to do this, but obviously now you're, you're pushing out further into the table, which isn't great either. Um, in terms of how much space you lose with the player desks, you're gonna lose about four inches or about four tiles worth of space going in from under uh, the player desks. And that's about where it's, it's gonna be hidden. Not that you can't use it obviously, but the players sitting there aren't gonna be able to see. So you're gonna lose about four inches and four inches on either side. Um, so just be aware of that. And then obviously the uh, game deck as previously stated is 14 inches. And then you've got about another four inches um, to five inches at most worth of space here. If you're gonna set up kind of like how I did, which personally speaking, I like the idea of doing this for a GM or DM, depending on what you call it in your group. Um, the idea of having a place where you can kind of hide things and kind of tuck them away and have your own little kind of private space. Uh, maybe even have a little component holder on the side so that that way uh, you can set your dice, you know, here if you don't want to have them in here. If you have maybe minis or something instead that you want to tuck in there. Um, I don't have a GM screen or anything that uh, normally someone else in my group does uh, play that role. So, um, but you can see, again, the card rail on here would, would function or maybe one day, you know, make an accessory that ties into the magnetic rail or maybe even they will. But um, this, this kind of gives you an idea of what the setup looks like and how the player desks function and um, kind of the overall workings of this. I guess the one last thing I'll just quickly showcase is the ease in which you can uh, remove these. Honestly, taking a little bit of a hip and just kind of hitting it a little bit is really all it takes uh, to gently slide this off and then lift it up and out and you're good to go. So like the, the actual design and how they look on this side, it's just a shelf with some magnets on it. Um, nothing too crazy in terms of design, but they're, they're definitely a one-handed pickup. Definitely something that you can manage and maneuver pretty easily. They're heavy, but they're not like the game deck where that's, uh, you know, 20 something pounds that you really need to have uh, a good grip and, and two hands to manipulate. So I think that's about it for everything. Uh, let me know if you need anything else covered. Uh, I only have one other video planned on the wireless charger and that should be a pretty quick one. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a good one. I hope these videos have helped and uh, I hope you guys enjoy your MGTs. Take care.